take 72. Take 72. Feels like. That's what it feels like today. Here we go. But this is so exciting. We are fucking the snow day up. We We are are doing this. And then we're going to have our night free. You guys were recording. It's not even noon yet. And I, in the middle, had a session and still have to leave and go to a session later. We're doing this. We are. We're so fucking productive. I'm so excited right now. If Um, I had to do this podcast alone, no. I wouldn't do it. (laughs) (laughs) I would be like, "Mm, I'm not going to do it today. Like I wouldn't do it. Well, here's the thing. I think I would do it, but my content would be shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think I would just be like, oh, I feel like recording right now. And I'd be like, today I'm going to talk about how I feel. <laughs> like, it'd be like a diary. How do people have their own podcasts by themselves? And it's not like, dear diary. They're really good at talking by themselves, I guess. I don't know. I need you to bounce things off of. But think I'm- about like, unfuck your brain. She's always by herself. I think that they have to like write out scripts though, to be honest. Like, I think they have to like read off something because- if you're not like dialoguing with somebody, yeah. I think I would get lost in my thoughts a lot and just start fucking blubbering about nothing. Well, and we know that <laughs> I get lost in my thoughts. So I'd be like, I don't even know where I was going with that. People would stop listening immediately. Anyways, thank God. Thank God we got this yin and yang. I haven't stuff. stopped listening at this point. Yeah, right. Thanks guys for um, listening still. <laughs> Today is episode 97, and we are talking about if we have set a goal, at what point am I going to allow myself to acknowledge that I might not reach that goal and might need to change it Mm -hmm. instead of choosing to die on that hill Mm -hmm. of this goal because that's what I set and I have to do it. And choosing to perpetually suffer and shame yourself and be mad and be resentful. Why are you doing that? You set the goal, which means you are in charge of what happens with that. You get to change it. Anytime you want. Any, literally, guess what? I have a goal of wanting to walk three miles every day. I now have um, strep and I can't get up and walk because I feel absolutely miserable. I get to change it Mm -hmm. because other variables that I, that were unbeknownst to me Mm -hmm. have come up. Mm -hmm. So I cannot control the fact that something has gotten in the way that was completely out of my control. And even if you don't completely change the goal, you can modify the goal. So for example, when I was sick, I didn't not do pull-ups because I was sick. I did much less pull-ups because that was all I could handle. Did I shame myself for not being able to do it? No, because I don't operate in black and white thinking of, well, if I didn't do 10, then I'm a fucking failure. Exactly. He would have. No, but and and then I chat, like, what good does that do? What good does it do then to sit here and frame in your mind? Well, I'm a failure because I didn't do 10. So, so just because we didn't do 10, 10 pull-ups or yeah, 10 pull-ups, we now fail at everything now. Right. Now it's just failure across the board. We can't look at all of the other things of like, Hey, I fucking woke up and press play still. Mm-hmm. I woke up and chose myself today. Still yep. not, not like I woke up and press play and like made myself suffer through it, but I woke up and chose to do something mm-hmm. because I know that moving my body feels good for me. Mm-hmm. Moving my body in that way doesn't feel good right now. That's okay. Yep. Having just gotten back from Ireland, I have not started a, a workout routine yet. I haven't fallen back into it. I've done walks today. I did. I did a walk yesterday because I just did not have enough time because I wanted to give myself time to sleep. And then I was not working out when I got home because eight sessions I was done. Mm-hmm. And then today, this morning, I did a bike ride. I did another five minute cool down. I helped shovel. I'll probably do a walk later. I, I'm I'm easing into it. Mm-hmm. One, because I am, have uh, words. <laughs> because I've just gotten home from traveling and I need to see how my body is feeling. I've never mm-hmm. flown. I've never had jet lag. I don't know what that's like. I've never experienced that. And then now coming down with a head cold and what I've got going on, I have to listen to my body. Mm-hmm. I'm not just going to stop. I'm just going to change the way that it looks right now and then plan for the next week of what feels good to me of, or what I would love to accomplish. So I'm going to start a core program next week that I'm really excited because it's my favorite instructor. Oh my God, I cannot wait. So I'm starting that core program and then I'm going to start a, a, um, a three day split, which just means like within the the week, the five days of the traditional week, three days, you do these lifting programs. And here's the thing. I'm going to move it around on what days feels good for me mm-hmm. because I have 
to listen to my body. I'm not mm -hmm. going to think, well, you didn't follow it the days that they told you to. So now you're a failure. Mm -hmm. No, I'm listening to myself because other things are going to come up. If I have a shit night of sleep, I'm not going to force myself to get up and pick up my heavies and fucking potentially injure myself. And now I'm out for six weeks. Are you mm -hmm. joking? I'm not doing that. And think about if you sent this like long-term goal for uh, fucking weight loss, right? Like within yeah. a year, I want to lose X amount of pounds. So <clears throat> you get to that year mark and you're two pounds shy of it. Are you going to say that you're a failure because you it's didn't all gone. that specific number? You're yes. completely throwing away all of the progress that you've made, not acknowledging the things that you have done and only focusing on what did not come to fruition. Mm -hmm. How is that? Yes. appropriate or fair for you. It, it's not. And that's what I'm hoping people are going to start understanding with this. This was sparked um, one, because we deal with a lot of clients who set goals for themselves and then struggle potentially having to change that goal because things that are outside of their, you know, circumstances that they, they're, they're not, it's like horse blinders. They're mm -hmm. not taking in those other variables that are at play here. It's just horse blinders. So I set this goal. got to meet this goal. How is that serving you? If you are fucking miserable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fucking miserable tied to this goal. Here's the thing. When we first started out for this podcast, I set a goal that we'd be in the top 10 charts of, of, of podcasts and that we would um, have 20,000 streams. I didn't set a date for the um, top 10, but I set a date for the 20,000 streams. And when I first shared that over a year ago, I remember your reaction being like, we put a date on it. Like, Oh my gosh, like what the heck? Not thinking like whatever. And I was like, if we don't fucking make it, we don't make it. Mm -hmm. It is what it is, but I'm going to dream and hope that that and write it as if it's happening and propel myself to want to do more, to be able to achieve that dream mm -hmm. versus just not doing anything. It can get so overwhelming looking at like what we just did before this of like doing all of the book, all of the booking mm -hmm. and trying to figure out the different topics we're going to talk about and this and that and all of these things that can get in the way and take away from the fact that, you know, I have this goal or dream. The date just gives it something is like this propelling towards making me want to share reels or want to, you know, share blah, 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 or like want to make a post. It, it's a lot of work goes into it. And if you only focus on the work aspect, you're then inundating yourself with like all of the negative thoughts of like, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I, maybe I won't. And all of the what ifs when just shift your goal, mm -hmm. shift your goal. I'm going to shoot for 20,000 by this date. And if we don't get it, we don't get it. But yep. I'm then at least going to act and propel myself as if and operate in that identity that I'm somebody who does achieve that. Mm -hmm. And I we think did. about too, we did. We absolutely did. And we've surpassed it. Yes. Um, I think about too, because we're both moms. I follow <coughs> moms. I have a lot of mom friends, right? Yeah. When you have a birth plan. And oh. the birth plan doesn't go as expected. Yes. And yes. then you shame yourself because you had to have an emergency C-section. Yes. Your plan was to breastfeed and then it wasn't in the cards for you. And yeah. then somehow that makes you a bad mom. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Or when your I, plan yeah. was to breastfeed for X amount of months and you made it halfway. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're a failure. Mm -hmm. It resonates with me. I wanted to. I I really, really wanted to. I When it first happened... I think we were, she had a very strong latch. Um, well, they said she had a strong latch and she, she definitely um, had the mouth power. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. Like, I don't know those strong suck, whatever. But now with her braces, I'm wondering if her, if um, her mouth was too little or like mm -hmm. something was, cause her jaw. Well, I don't know how any of that works really. Well, well, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So not her jaw, but so the, um, her, pediatric dentist says that she has a bit of a tongue tie and mm -hmm. that it, that is what it has created her narrow jaw. And so that's why when we went to the ortho, they had to do an expander. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if that also played a part in having to stop after like 48 hours, because it just, it was, it was like a horror movie. Mm -hmm. It was like a murder scene. So then I was pumping. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm pumping and I can pump and it's not going to be any issue. Mm -hmm. Well, at friggin' six weeks, I'm struggling to get barely anything. And so then I made it to three and a half months. And I was like, I don't, what am I doing? What am I Literally. actually doing? Everything, like I'm trying my fucking best, right? And yeah. I really wanted to be able to do this for her. Also because we were fucking poor. So sure. I was like, if this can be free from me, like I need yeah. to try to be able to do that. So I'm sitting here trying to do that. But like, at what cost? 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm Your in sanity. Grad, yeah, I'm in graduate school. I'm working a full time job. I'm working a part time job, and I have a newborn. Mm-hmm. I have to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And it just had to be that moment where I let it go. Now, I don't think that I had this thought process that I was a failure because from the get go, like it just, things weren't lining up. So it's not like I had this wonderful, you know, like, you know, six months of greatness and then all of a sudden something switched. So I think that made it easier for me, but having that thought process of like, uh, it's just not in the cards. You're going to have to buy mm-hmm. the formula. And it, so I didn't like view it as a failure, like view, like I couldn't provide for my child. I was just really upset of like, I think maybe there could have been a little thought process of like, I'm costing my family more money now because mm-hmm. I can't do this because my body can't do this. Mm-hmm. But then I think too, I think that that gets stomped out too of like, you, you've literally always had struggles with your body and you have celiac disease. Like you have an autoimmune disease, like that, like you can't, it, your body isn't functioning to, to boot. Like you're, it's sure. not, it's not, there's no homeostasis that you can already re- like you're already slighted, mm-hmm. you know? So it doesn't make sense to then sit there and, and do that. My sister, I think Tara struggled with wanting to make it a year and that, or maybe it was giving it up after a year. One of the two she struggled with. So I guess it wouldn't be relevant if she made it the year and then like giving up, but it was viewed in that thought process of like all or nothing of like, well, I'm giving up. And it's mm-hmm. it, at what point do you take a step back and recognize how is this effective in your everyday life to hold yourself to this standard? Like of even oh God with COVID thinking about working out and wanting to, to, um, to be able to provide, you know, time for her, but like then having my working out in the morning and like, what is that going to look like? And being like, well, if I don't hit, you know, this much working out time during this amount of time, cause I'm home, I have the time, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Like forcing myself into this thought process of like, but that's not effective for you. Mm-hmm. You can't sit here and say, well, last year I did this, or with this kid, I did this, or with this job, I did this with these friends, I did this and apply it to the situation you're in now, because you're not, mm-hmm. you're not in this same situation. Well, and if every part of that situation is making you miserable, but your stubbornness to move the goal or to modify the goal is preventing you from doing like that's on you. Yeah. And you you need to to make the decision of like, what is, excuse me, what is, how is this helping me? Yeah. Right. Explore it. How is this helping me? How is, is tying myself to this and not allowing myself to change what it's going to look like, helping me help. And then here's the thing. We've talked about it how many times you, you have to come first, right? But then Mm -hmm. what are all of the other roles and hats that you wear? How is that trickling down and then affecting everything else? Because it will. Yeah. I mean, me sitting here saying, oh, I need to be working out this much in the pandemic when it was like, I'm trying to work from home, trying to figure out telehealth for the first time, trying to figure out my daughter doing online schooling. How was I being a good mother? How was I being a good therapist? How was I showing up for myself? I wasn't. Yep. I'm sitting here saying I have to do all of these things, but I'm not in the same situation though. Yep. So it doesn't do me any good to sit and compare. Well, I I used to be able to do it. Why can't I? Mm -hmm. You're not the same person. Mm -hmm. Yep. If the goal that you've set for yourself is creating a disruption in your life, view that emotion as a data point. You're the scientist. You're collecting data. What is it telling you? That Mm -hmm. is all emotions are people. Please stop giving them more weight than they're fucking necessary. It's all that it is. It's an, it's a data point. It's giving you feedback. That's what an emotion is. It's telling you something. What is it telling you? This is creating disruption in my life. I don't like it. I'm feeling X, Y, Z. So your body is trying to say, hey, it's, it doesn't feel good. I don't want to do this anymore. What do we need to do? And that body reaction is not because it's tied to the goal of a body, but that, that your body is trying to tell your brain. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Like yep. you're physically reacting to something to get yourself together, to be able to start communicating of like, you know, I, I, I am worried about, you know, I'm feeling so worried about setting this boundary with people. My goal is to be a more, uh, you know, authentic, 
assertive person. I'm worried about setting this boundary with this person. What is that telling you? It's mm-hmm. telling you that, hey, you're, you're putting your body in a, in a vulnerable situation and we feel like there's danger here. Your brain can show up and say, there's no danger here. The reason we're setting this goal is for this purpose, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And get your body and brain together. It's a data point. That's all it is. View it for what it's trying to tell you. Yep. But putting horse blinders on and ignoring what your body and mind are attempting to get on the same path together is only going to create more of this distance between that connection. Mm-hmm. It's keeping you out of your wise mind and solely in your emotional mind. Correct. Make sense? Yep. <clears throat> Again, I feel like I'm beating the dead <laughs> horse. So I feel like that really <laughs> solidifies it. So. I would love to hear your feedback on this on this episode. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions because, again, this could be viewed very subjectively. If you have thoughts and feelings about this episode, let us know. We can do an addition to the episode and mm-hmm. express further into detail what we're meaning. If you have a question and you're like, well, hey, what about this? Let us challenge that for you. Sure. Let us do that and or open our eyes to something that maybe we didn't think about. Again, we're two humans who have a podcast and are talking about our subjective view of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not always going to fit and that's okay. Yep. All right. You can find Steph at the spooky therapist. You can find me at B E A underscore X O 11. You can find us at rewriting her story podcast on Instagram. And then you can find us at rewriting her story podcast on YouTube as well. So you can see our smiling faces and you can find, email us questions, concerns, comments that see, man, it's the fourth one. The fourth one gets me. I'm just I'm spiraling. You can email us any questions, concerns, comments, or topics that you would like covered at rewriting her story podcast at gmail.com until next time. Bye. Bye.